Thank you. Um, I want to start with um, some ideas around collaboration to share the knowledge. So what I find fascinating is that we're surrounded in a design studio and last week I was in Sri Lanka and I was looking at a building that was rammed earth and it was absolutely beautiful. It had two butterflies floating literally inside it while I was sitting in it. It was just beautiful. And when I went on tour, um, I went into a design studio where engineers and architects were working in an environment just like this. And what I want to get to as a conversation is, unless we have information and unless we share the information and layer the information, then our planning rules will be our number one barrier. So all of you as practitioners, design practitioners, industry practitioners will say, well, this is all very interesting. You know, on our individual projects, I can do it, but I can't affect a street. I certainly can't affect a city. So um, I want to just give a few more statistics of a little boy, El Nino. He was visiting about 20 years ago, and he's back. So <laughs> this was the hottest year on record. Next year is predicted by Andy Pittman, one of our IPCC scientists at the University of New South Wales, just at lunchtime, that next year will be our hottest year on record. So the sense of urgency is real. He didn't want to go so far as to say 2007 would be even a longer uh, tail for El Nino and that it's building such momentum that he didn't want to stop at 2016 being our hottest year on record. In the policy framework in Paris, we have a new Prime Minister, we have a different discussion in Paris because the world could leave Australia if it decides that it's going to take action on 1.5 degree rise rather than a 2 degree rise. That has significant impacts on the water. But if it's a 1.5 degree rise, then that means a massive divestment strategy, which means all sorts of assets are stranded. So I'm going to talk about New South Wales and Australia. Our assets are stranded. What's stranded? We're trying to flog off an energy distribution network. It's a stranded asset if the world goes for making a decision about 1.5 degrees, OK? So you're with me. This energy efficiency element that Norbert is talking about is absolutely essential. And I'm a bit sick of engineers holding back information and expecting architects to interpret the information that engineering has at hand. So for the engineers in room, I'm sorry if there are any, but I, I'm really over the building information modelling, I'm holding this information and it's somehow my IP. We have to move to open source collaboration of building information modelling. It's kind of a design charrette on steroids and it's continual. We're continually designing, redesigning, redesigning. And as we build models of buildings, city blocks, and cities, we're sharing information, updating information on the refurbishment and development cycles that are just happening all the time within our cities, and we're measuring per performance, and we're getting information about how we're we going in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, critical number one burning platform. Um, so in my last minute, I just want to say that the UK government has a, a BIM mandate, which requires if you work on a government project, you have to share the information. So they take it, it's collaborative, and then they share it. They've gone to the next level and they want to create Sydney city open source information. And in addition to that, Austin, Texas has one of the first open source BIM uh, technologies that is a design practice just like this that kind of decided, let's just share it. And then people started to pile in, crowdsource and share and share and share more information. Um, so I sat today, I want to go back to Sri Lanka, but I sat today in the City of Sydney Design Advisory Panel. We were dealing with a beautiful project at uh, Green Square, which is the Aquatic Centre. Absolutely delightful. That team is being challenged by the response on severe weather events. The flooding issue that exists in a low-lying area of Green Square is number one, all known to us. The one in 100 year event occurs just about every year, so it's not one in 100. But in addition to that, just getting design principles, visibility, the whole beauty of that project is being crashed because of the engineering and the climate change response need. So we have to lift the level of understanding sophistication. We have to get science, we have to get technology, and we have to come to open source. So in Sri Lanka, 
they were building buildings uh, and the army got the award because they're training soldiers who have been fighting for more than 35 years in sustainable construction. We can debate the ethics of that, but separate to that, India was present in Sri Lanka. India today cannot keep building out of concrete. There is not enough sand or water. They are actually importing sand and water to build concrete today. So we've got to come up with different materials and different methods. And the idea of acting, if we can get a 40% reduction in whiting our cities, I'm all for it. So there's my five minutes of conversation. Thank you.